So according to a study by Masterworks, contemporary artwork as an asset class has beaten the stock market and most other asset classes out there since the year 1995. Since that time, contemporary artwork has returned 13% returns on average each year. That is compared to a 10.2% return from stocks, an 8.9% return from real estate, and just a 7.2% return from gold. But before you put one single dollar into artwork as an investment, watch until the end of this video. We will be covering how the value of artwork is determined and why it's different than any other asset class that you have owned in the past. We're also gonna talk about the one and only way that artwork can generate returns for your investment portfolio. We're also going to be covering factors that skew the paper returns that you see for artwork so you should be aware of all of this before you jump on board with this asset class lastly this video is not sponsored so let's start off by defining what artwork investing is artwork is an alternative asset class so it's different than traditional assets out there like stocks and bonds now artwork investing means that you're owning a piece of artwork artwork with this idea in mind that it will increase in value over time and that you're going to sell it someday and make some money versus somebody who's just collecting artwork and that's someone who's buying it to pretty much appreciate it in their own collection and they're not so much buying something from the standpoint of making money. So when you're an artwork investor, your number one priority above all else is making money, not so much collecting the pieces that you are most interested in. Now, for most of history, artwork has been a tangible asset, which is one of the many reasons why it has done especially well during this high inflationary time. However, we're also going to talk briefly about NFTs or digital artwork because this pretty much breaks away from what I just said, seeing as NFTs or a digital token are not a tangible asset. Now, in the past, artwork investing usually meant going out and buying an entire painting yourself or being involved in some type of exclusive artwork investment club. But either way, you were talking about tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars in order to begin investing. Well, thanks to technology today and a lot of innovations in finance, you are now able to buy shares of artwork with an investment minimum starting at as low as $500 with some different companies. Now, I'm sure you guys have seen the plethora of sponsorships out there there for masterworks and um, also just social media ads all over the place. So we are going to specifically look at that as well and sort of debunk that as far as whether or not it is a legitimate investment opportunity. But anyway, the main point here is in the past, it was really difficult to access artwork as an investment because you needed tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. But now today with the various avenues that only require a few hundred bucks, well, a lot of people are looking at artwork as an avenue for investment. So that's why the overall category has really grown in popularity. Now, perhaps the most important thing to understand about artwork investing or any investment in general is how that asset makes you money. And artwork is a non yield bearing asset. So yes, it is a tangible asset unless we're talking about NFTs, meaning it's a real thing you can put your hands on and physically look at. At. Um, but on the other hand, it's not a yield bearing asset, meaning it doesn't pay you any money while you own it. So in this sense, it's actually similar to Bitcoin or gold because it doesn't pay you any amount of money while you own it, meaning the only way to make money is relying on what's called the greater fool theory or other words being asset appreciation. I think the simplest way to understand this is looking at examples of yield bearing assets since this is what most of us are familiar with. So looking at dividend stocks, when you buy a share of a stock like Coca-Cola, for example, you buy it at a set price and then from that point in time it can go up 
or it can go down. But no matter what that share price does, in addition, while you're owning those shares, you're also going to earn quarterly dividends so long as Coca-Cola continues paying them. Another example is rental apartments. So if you own apartments or even a single family home, for example, that you rent out, well, now you're able to make money from that in two different ways because first of all, the underlying land and property could go up in value. And second of all, you should be earning cash flow from those rental checks coming in every single month. So those are yield bearing assets that pay you in two different ways. And so this is the important distinction to understand. If you go out there and you make a bad decision and you buy a dividend stock at the wrong time, and then the uh, share price goes down in value, you can still rely on the dividends to basically bail you out and get you back towards that break even level. Even with a rental property, let's say you didn't time the market well, and then the market drops 10%, as long as your property is cash flow, flowing and if you want to hold on to it for a couple of years maybe even a decade you're not really going to be worried about the short term the thing with artwork is that it either appreciates in value or it doesn't that's your only way to make money so all of your eggs are in one basket in terms of your monetization strategy for this asset now when artwork does appreciate in value it can be some massive returns for example looking at this painting here called girl with a pearl earring originally created in 1665, well, it was purchased in 1881 for a low price of just $27. Well, today it's worth $30 million. Of course, that would have been a great investment, but you wouldn't even be alive today had you been somebody who bought it. In fact, probably even your children would be, you know, grandparents at this point in time. So seeing as most people don't have somewhere around 140 or 150 years to wait, you know, artwork isn't something where you can expect that type of insane return. But nonetheless, you do need to get this idea in your head of artwork being this very long-term investment and think about things taking a decade, if not longer, for meaningful appreciation to be realized. So yes, if you zoom out over many, many decades, artwork returns can be really, really high. But when you look at them on a closer level, you realize that these trends happen over a long span of time through one method, which is the value of the artwork going up. While you own it, you don't have cash flow, you don't have dividends. So just be aware of that because you have to be extremely patient as an artwork investor. So now I want to cover how artwork is valued because it's completely different than stocks and real estate, which you are probably more familiar with. So with stocks, you can look at quantitative data or specific figures like earnings per share and revenue to help you understand the current value of a stock and then the future future projected value. With real estate, it's similarly valued based on quantitative things or numbers that you can actually look at or other factors such as location, upgrades, etc. But nonetheless, very easy things that you can look at and really understand quite simply. Well, with artwork, the value is totally subjective. And what that means is that it is not based in any way, shape or form on the utility value of that object. So all of the examples prior here looking at stocks and real estate, those things are being valued largely based on the utility value that they provide to the investor. So for example, if you're invested in a growth stock, it's the utility value of the growth potential of that company and then the future profits and revenue that that could uh, of course generate. And then looking at real estate, there's of course this utility value of allowing other people to occupy it for a monthly fee or you yourself can take advantage of that utility value and live in your own real estate investment. So there's not this utility value here with artwork that you can look at in terms of profits generated or a structure that you can reside in or allow other people to. So what determines the value then? Well, it's going to be variables such as the visual appeal of the piece or the 
subject and complexity, and artwork valuation is largely determined by an appraisal that is performed by a professional auction house. And this auction house market is pretty tight. There's only three main ones that people use, and we'll get into what those are in a little bit. But the value of artwork is determined by these experts out there at auction houses, but understand it's based on subjective factors that are often difficult to you know pinpoint or put your finger on. A lot of making money with artwork simply comes down to finding the right artist who you think will be far more popular in future decades and then buying their artwork today. And I know it sounds pretty simple, but it is far more difficult in reality to accomplish this. Um, but in the most simple manner, that is how you value artwork and then make money with it uh, is in those methods. Now, even though artwork doesn't provide us with utility value, it clearly does have value in society. In fact, it's one of the oldest asset classes out there and something that has literally had value for thousands of years. So there are clearly reasons to invest in artwork and society has clearly said, yes, artwork has value. So that being said, it shouldn't just be completely written off or forgotten about. So let's now cover a few reasons why you might want to consider adding artwork to your portfolio. So first of all, diversification. If you only have money, Money in stocks and bonds, you're susceptible to those pesky ups and downs of the stock market. And these alternative assets are often not as correlated or even correlated whatsoever with what the broader stock market is doing. Second on the list, in the past, tangible assets have proven to be effective hedges against inflation. And so with the inflation we have seen previously, that has caused a lot of artwork prices to increase. But if we do see see inflation to remain high in future years that may also bolster artwork prices as well as other tangible assets. Another huge benefit here is the tax benefits with artwork. Similar to a 1031 exchange in real estate, you are able to defer taxes if you sell a painting for a profit by investing in a like kind painting with those proceeds. So you could theoretically keep buying and selling whole paintings, reinvesting those profits, and then never ending up paying that tax bill to the IRS. Of course, we do have to mention the bragging rights associated with this asset class because most people just don't own it. And so there is that cool factor that does come along with this particular asset. And so it might be similar to like a classic car collection, for example, where the asset itself does have some level of cool factor. There's also the fact that artwork returns have beaten the stock market in recent decades, but do keep in mind that past results do not guarantee a similar outcome in the future. We talked about how long artwork has been generating returns for investors, and so artwork has a very long track record of generating returns, so it's pretty much the complete opposite of something like NFTs or cryptocurrency, which have a very short window of time where they've been generating returns for investors, but as of recently, mostly a lot of losses. And finally, perhaps one of the biggest reasons is that artwork tends to be what is called a safe haven asset or where a lot of money tends to go when other big asset classes fall. So during times of stock market corrections or crashes or even the housing market, you tend to see a lot of that money flooding into artwork. So they can be sort of a non-correlating asset in that manner, so that is the other reason to consider. Now, as many of you already know, I have a number of different blogs out there, but my curiosity about artwork investing in general led me to start my next blog, which is all about artwork investing. So if you've enjoyed this video so far and the information presented, you're gonna love my blog as well because I'm actually the editor and the manager of this website, and then uh, my only other partner helps out with the content, and we put everything together for this presentation and all of this information. So it's pretty much going to be an extension of what you've seen here in this video. So what I would recommend doing is going over to the website, which is artworkinvestor.com, and then simply bookmark the website for a later date. So even if you're not looking to explore this asset class right now, maybe down the road, um, depending on where you're at financially or where the markets are at, if you are ready to just learn more about it, you can revisit 
visit this blog here and uh, not to toot my own horn or anything, but the main reason why I made this blog is because when I was researching artwork, I wasn't finding very much out there. And so I decided to be the one to create that resource. So um, that is essentially what we've done here. So you can see some articles we have. I have one that's a portfolio update on my investment in Masterworks. So that is a really cool article to check out. We also have a 5,000 or so word guide to artwork investing for beginners. And that may sound like it's really long and boring, but it's actually very, very informational. And uh, I think you'll find it to be a very interesting read. So that's going to be the top link down in the description below. If you want to check out our beginner's guide to artwork investing over on artworkinvestor.com. So let's say you decide you want to include artwork in your portfolio. What are your options for investing? Well, as discussed earlier, option number one is to buy a painting yourself or you could get involved in a private artwork investing club where a small number of individuals are pooling money together. Well, in the past, this was the only way that you could invest in artwork. So as a result, it was really a asset class that only the HNW or the high net worth could even really get exposure to. While some art auctions do start as low as $100, most of them are going to be $50,000 or more for a painting that's really investment worthy. And then if you're talking about blue chip contemporary artwork, you're now talking about in the millions of dollars for an individual painting. So the option that interests many others instead is to invest via a platform. And we're going to talk about each of these more specifically in a little bit, but the two most popular today that you've probably seen ads for are Masterworks and YieldStreet. While innovations in fintech or financial technology have allowed for new investment opportunities, and one of those has been fractional ownership of alternative investments like Outwork. And one of those has been fractional ownership of alternative investments like Artwork. So it sort of started off with fractional shares where brokerages realized they could split shares up into pieces and sell those pieces versus entire shares that could be very costly. And then that technology branched out into other asset classes like farmland and wine and now artwork. So think of a painting being broken up into individual shares and then investors themselves buying shares of that painting. So let's say, for example, you have a painting worth $2 million. If you needed to buy it yourself, you would just have to have $2 million to put towards that painting or let's say a group of 10 friends that each had 200,000. Well, let's consider instead if you could actually break that up into 100,000 shares at $20 each and then offer that to thousands of investors. That's pretty much what these platforms do. It's called crowdfunding um, is, is another word for it. It started off in real estate, but yes, once again, it has branched out into other asset classes. And then outside of buying individual shares of our artwork, there are some platforms that offer artwork as part of an investment fund, which is essentially a professionally managed pool of assets. And so YieldStreet does offer a couple of funds that have artwork as part of the portfolio um, to have diversified exposure to different asset classes. So let's say you do want to own a painting yourself directly. Your next step is to pursue an auction house. An auction house facilitates the buying and selling of assets. And there's three types of auctions, the English, the Dutch, and the sealed price auction. Well, the interesting thing about artwork is that 70% of all artwork is sold through just three auction houses. So if you do want to own artwork directly yourself, you're going to end up at some point in time going through all three Three of these auction houses. Number one is Sotheby's and they have a 32% market share. Number two is Christie's and they did $7 billion of revenue in 2021. And then number three is Philips, which started in London in 1796. Now, some of these still have prices starting as low as $100. So don't think that just because it's a big fancy name that it's, uh, you know, $100 million paintings always 
these, but you will also find those on there. So it can be a very wide range of prices and you will find these offered both in person and online. So let's say you don't have $100,000 to put into your own painting and you want to leverage FinTech and invest with a platform. Well, there's pretty much three avenues that are popular to accomplish this today. And all three of these are FinTech apps. Number one, probably the one you've heard of the most is Masterworks, where you can buy and sell shares of contemporary blue chip artwork. This platform is invitation only, but if you are looking to skip the waitlist, I do have an affiliate link down below that allows you to do so, or the link is ryanoscribner.com slash masterworks. Your first investment does require a $500 minimum, but the share price does range on the value of the artwork, but it's usually around $20 per share. So what's cool about Masterworks is even with a $500 investment, you don't necessarily have to put all of that money into one particular piece. You could spread it out across multiple different investment options that they offer, giving you diversification within your artwork investment. Number two is Yield Street, and this is a platform that offers access to many different alternative investment offerings. And the one in particular I want to talk about is the Prism Fund, as this one does include exposure to artwork. So instead of going and buying individual shares of art on Masterworks, this would be the equivalent of investing in a managed portfolio of assets, where artwork is one component of that portfolio. So if you want to look at the link to check out the Prism Fund, that's going to be ryanoscribner.com slash yieldstreet, or it's also going to be down in the description below. And this particular fund does have a $2,500 minimum, but do understand that there's no direct share purchasing with Yield Street. So if you are looking to buy shares of artwork itself directly, you are not able to do that right now on Yield Street. And then number three, we have public. I'm sure you've heard of this app before if you've watched any videos about the stock market and they are mostly known for stock and crypto trading but recently they acquired a company called Otis which is offering alternative investments so now those offerings are available right within the public app so you're able to buy shares of artwork sneakers and even NFTs so if you already have the public app you may find that there are some artwork investments in there from time to time. We also have full reviews of all of these platforms over on artworkinvestor.com. So if you do want to learn more about any of those, be sure to check out those review articles. Now, it wouldn't be a proper artwork investing video without briefly touching on NFTs, since these are a form of artwork, although they are extremely speculative. Well, NFTs are a non-fungible token or digital artwork. What's amazing to look at is just how fast NFTs NFT sales grew. So in 2019, NFT sales reached $4.6 million. And by 2021, that figure climbed to $11.1 billion. Just to put that in perspective, that's 11,100 million. So it went from 4.6 million to 11,100 million in just that two year span. So keep in mind that uh, we're very early in the NFT um, adoption. And it's also up in the air whether or not these are going to have long term value. But if you are looking to learn, you know, this is a really good space, I would say, to learn. Maybe not so much, you know, putting a lot of money in to because uh, it's not time tested and it's not necessarily, you know, something that has those other quality attributes that a traditional artwork investment has. So we got to see this insane boom and bust play out. But does that mean that NFTs are going to go away forever? Personally, I think not. And that's what most experts think as well. So according to the Art Market 2022 report, 88% of HNW or high net worth investors stated that they had interest in buying an NFT in 2022. 
Now, bear in mind, that was back when NFT prices were going up, and I would love to hear what that number is now. But at that point in time, a lot of sophisticated high net worth investors did think about potentially or had interest in buying an NFT. So although NFTs are interesting, it's still very early. So I would recommend, you know, being extremely cautious if it's something you are personally pursuing as an investment. I would say learn about it for now and, you know, keep an eye on it and see what happens, you know, over the coming months as there's probably going to be better deals in the future on many of these NFT projects. So let's touch more now on artwork investment returns because I think it's important to understand the source of that statistic that we talked about in the intro here. And so let's start off with that one more time just so we can recap. According to a study conducted by Masterworks, from 1995 to present, artwork has returned 13% annually and that's compared to a 10.2% return from stocks, 8.9% from real estate, and 7.2% from gold. But it's important to understand that this was a study of contemporary art sold after 1945, looking at all art that sold at least two times. So this is really the post-World War II liquid art market that they were looking at. And so understand there's many paintings that did not transact more than two times since 1945. Perhaps there's ones that people bought that just didn't appreciate in value, so there was no reason for a transaction. So there are reasons why artwork in general could be skewed looking at this particular data, but on Masterworks in general, they have a very um, defined process for vetting artwork and deciding what contemporary artwork ends up on their website. So the types of artwork that do end up on their platform are the types that are mentioned in this statistic but just understand that this may not be covering all types of artwork in the entire world. We're looking at contemporary artwork um, that has sold at least two times since um, 1945. Lastly, I want to finish off with some of the risks associated with investing in artwork. Well, first of all, it is a long-term investment. I would say at least a three to 10 plus year investment, and it may be illiquid in the meantime. If you buy shares on a platform like Masterworks. They do have a secondary market where you can sell them, um, but there may be some fees incurred with cashing out early and things of that nature. So in general, if you're not looking to invest for at least three years and probably many more, it's just an asset class that you shouldn't even consider because there's only one way to make money, which we now know is the asset appreciation or greater fool theory. And that takes many, many years to play out. So if you're looking for a six month investment, this is simply not going to be it. You are locked into just that one strategy for making money. And so if you buy the wrong painting and it doesn't appreciate in value, that's the only way you could have made money from it. And so at that point, you just have a painting. If you do decide to buy your own painting, you have to consider the potential for theft or counterfeit. So keep in mind, you should have these things professionally evaluated. And I would recommend only going through a professional auction house like the three mentioned in this video. And lastly, we covered that artwork is extremely difficult to value because of the subjective nature of the asset class. But anyways, guys, that is a basic overview of artwork investing. And I hope it sheds some light for you on where these returns are coming from and how some of this might not be exactly what it appears. But in general, I would say artwork is a really solid asset class and something that should be considered um, if you are looking to diversify outside of stocks and bonds. So once again, if you want to learn more, be sure to check out my blog, artworkinvestor.com. I would recommend bookmarking it for later. And at the top of the description down below, we have a link to our full artwork investing guide, which I think you will find is a great companion for uh, what you just learned here in this video. But thanks so much for tuning in, guys. Make sure you drop a like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications of future uploads. And as always, I hope to see you in the next video.